Yes, and welcome to Vasily's Garden, folks. Now, you know it's fruit tree pruning season, and we all got to get out there in the next couple of weeks at least to get into our trees if you haven't done so already. With advanced trees, you should always be pruning in summer as well, so you can reduce the over, overall vigour in the tree in springtime, but that doesn't mean you don't prune in winter. You also go back in winter to clean up any dead, disease and damaged wood. Now, we've been running our fruit tree workshops here, and we've come out into the orchard because on the days that we've been doing the pruning, we haven't been painting, and I'll get into that in a second, but I want to show you some of the trees that we've pruned because every tree is not identical in its shape and form. Obviously, they're all different varieties, and they all got different growing habits, and they will vary if you've got a plum tree like I have here, let's say it's a mariposa, and you've got a plum tree in your place and it's a mariposa, and the microclimate's completely different to what it is here, they will grow differently again. And it's all about the training from young. I haven't done a lot of training with these trees as much as I should have or would like to have to open them up, so that means I've got to cut harder into the tree to get it back into a uniform shape where I want it to stay smaller and an open vase and wider. And that's what we've done with this tree. And you can see on the ground, if you have a look besides the rabbit hole, we've taken off some decent branches on here, which the tree in itself would have been at least another six to eight hundred high, uh, in height that is, so almost two and a half metres tall, which is already too tall for a young tree. This is only three and a half years of age. We've taken out the centre now, and this is what we do with the workshop. For those who uh, want to get involved, haven't booked your seats yet, take advantage of it, because we've still got three workshops left, where there are only a few seats left. You can come along and Craig Cashbury, my good mate, the expert's going to come along and talk about grafting and pruning as well. But back onto the topic here, we've taken out the centre because we had a central leader running through here, which was actually taller, um, well, growing quite tall that is, uh, and branches on, on the top half of it, which is what we didn't want. So I've taken the centre out and we're trying to create a north, south, east, west structure, normally four main branches from the bottom of the trunk. Uh, and in this case here, we've got that, but they're not in the perfect uniform shape. That's okay. And as we grow up, or the branch grows up, we do lop it off about 30 or 40 centimetres and get it to multiply and open up. And that's what we've done here, opened up the branch understanding that the fruit will come on the plum tree from first year growth, also second year growth, which you'll have some little spurs developing off that, and even older. But it depends on the health of the tree and the vitality of the tree, uh, whether it will produce on older wood. So you want to try and keep some young wood on here where we've done here on the tips, and we want to keep cutting them down to about 30 centimetres. Every prune you make, so we haven't completely cleaned it out because we've got plenty of space here for it to grow, but every prune you make, you'll come back with two or three new branches. That's the tree uh, as it comes into the growing season. So these will technically give us at least six, maybe more branches, which we can go back and thin out. Quite content to do that, and because they're pliable, we can actually train them down. So tie them up and weigh them down or put a peg at the bottom so you can arch the branch outwards because the best fruit comes from a horizontal or an angle growing branch, not a vertical branch like that. So these here need to be tied down, for example, like that. Imagine that tied down. I haven't done it yet, but we will in the upcoming episodes and show you how we tie it down and reshape a tree. That's quite rigid, but we've got these branches to work off. If I end up getting another shoot from here, I may keep this branch or I may just remove it completely and replace it with this. So you've got to analyse not only where you've done the prune, but think about where it's going to grow from again once you've pruned it and will that interfere with a residing branch. And that really depends on how big you want the tree to grow as well. So I can pull these branches out and open it right up because I want these trees to grow around three plus meters in diameter so that I've got a nice wide tree, low tree, open center and I can harvest around it. And I've got plenty of room to do that between my trees and the, and the rows. Now once you've done your prune, on the topic of protecting your trees, you must use a tree sealer. Now you can get a product called tree stack or you can simply make it using hydrated lime. Now hydrated lime if you are near a Greek or live in a suburb where Greeks are, more than likely you would have seen white trunks on their trees if they're growing in the front yard uh, and along the branches as well. It's been practiced for I won't say hundreds of years, probably hundreds of years if not longer, where they use a hydrated lime as a sealer, antiseptic and a protective coating layer on the bark of the tree, that is the trunk and the branches, but more importantly on where you've done the cuts. Now I've done cuts all over this place, or our participants have, 
and now we need to seal it. Why we do that is because it's exposed to bacterial infection whilst it's dormant. So let me get down in here properly and we simply just dab it on like paint. Now you can use a water-based paint as well. It's not an antiseptic as the uh, hydrated lime is. It does a better job of that, but it does seal the actual wound that you've created, the open cut that is. So seal it around, dab it on, and you may need to do two coats on it. How is it made? Well, it's hydrated lime and water, basically. Mix it into a thickness like that of cream. Have a look at this. See that there? And the longer you let it sit, the more it infuses and the more it will stay on the plant. So if you mix it straight away and try to apply it straight away, it may run off or it may wash off on the first signs of rains. But if you allow it to sit for you know half an hour, sometimes longer if you like, it becomes nice and gluggy like that. And then when you apply it and it dries, well, rain can come and it'll have no effect. Especially cuts that are facing upwards because you don't want water getting in there and making it soggy and getting underneath the cambium layer and bacteria developing. So open cuts, any, any cut you've done, and it's not just the cuts that you need to paint. For example, on apricot trees, they are susceptible to gamosas, and when you've got high levels of rainfall, if you've got cherry trees and sometimes plum trees, and especially apricot trees, these horizontal branches that we want to develop because that's where we'll get our fruit on an angle branch like that, You'll get water sitting on there, cracking into the outer layer of the bark and penetrating through, then lifting the bark off. That becomes an open wound. By sealing it, and I'll just give you an example, by sealing over these horizontal branches like that, you're actually sealing it from infection and the adverse weather that we have with the rain and all that. So seal your tree. If you like, you can paint the entire trunk up to about waist height if you like, if you've got branches like this. Or if you don't want to do that, just simply paint over, at least paint over the wounds to ensure that they are sealed from the elements of nature and moisture getting in and bacteria infecting it. Just like this, and you can see the first coat is a little bit thin, but if you do a second coat and once it dries, it'll stay white and it will remain on the plant for at least six months, which is what you want it to do. And that way, your concerns are limited or reduced as far as the infection is concerned on these plants. Now, what size branch do you do? You can do pencil thickness like this. That's fine as well, especially the up ones, the ones that are facing up. And it doesn't hurt to go around to all of them unless it's a huge tree and you've got way too many cuts and you think it's going to take you too long. So just work on the larger ones rather than the real small pencil thick uh, branches. It's the big ones that we really are concerned about and even in the cracks and crevices. So for example here, look at this. This is my bad folks, all right? I'm gonna show you my bad. I've left the label in here. That's gonna become a weak joint. I don't know for the life of me how this got away. I've gotta cut that off. But let's say that's not there. That's a crack or a crevice there where water will sit. And over time, if it stays moist, it will penetrate through the bark and cause problems to occur. Now I'm getting it all over me. Silly Vasily. Ooh, don't ever use that when you're talking to me or addressing me. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> I just opened, opened up a can of worms there, didn't I? I'm painting the trunk as well, folks. And this was actually going to work, and I should have done this a long time ago. It would work pretty well on controlling rabbits. You know, I know all this, and I don't practice what I preach enough. But that doesn't mean you do the same. So, paint your trunk. Seal it all over nicely like this and that way you're giving life to your tree and it stops, it will stop some insects from crawling up the trunk as well. It has a great effect as in retarding them or slowing them down so they don't like travelling over the hydrated line, be it all dry and all that. So painting it up, and I'm going to do this to every single tree here folks, not today, I'd like to do it today, but by the time we finish all the pruning sessions and the workshops, well, these trees will all have a nice coat of hydrated lime and I'll feel like I'm in Greece again. A nice coat of hydrated lime on the trees is what you need to do. 
seal all the wounds when you finish pruning. And now if you need to learn about pruning and understand a bit more about grafting and how to prepare your tree and grow a very vibrant and healthy and very fruitful tree, get onto our workshops. They're available on our website. Book yourself. There's only three classes left on fruit tree pruning and grafting and preparing and everything you need to know about them uh, on the 13th, 20th and 22nd of July. So it's only around the corner, only a few seats left. Facilitiesgarden.com. And if you're watching this just as we've uploaded it, switch over to 693 AM dialed radio. That's uh, 3AW Weekend Gardening with myself and Darren James. Talking gardening, give us a call. Uh, we'll try and solve your problems. Otherwise, have a wonderful day. From me, Vasily, Maresi.